Hey all, I'm Ryan and welcome to my channel, Ry Ry McGuy. It's a floss tube channel where we talk about cross stitching, we talk about sewing on occasion, we talk about knitting sometimes, uh, just needle arts in general, uh, just here for a good time. Uh, so if, if you're new, welcome. Um, thank you for tuning in, I appreciate the company. And uh, if you're returning, Thanks for coming back. Um, I, I love reading your comments, really. I think that's kind of the highlight of um, this floss tube experience has, has been all of the interactions uh, that I've had with um, all of you out there. So I, I really appreciate it. And kind of as a, as a reward for you, I'm going to be treating you to all new content today. <laughs> that's right. Um, Nothing we're going to see here is a work in progress that you've seen before. All the charts are new, uh, well, for me anyways. And uh, yeah, so, so we're going to have a fun day. Uh, so grab your beverage of choice. Grab your stitching, sit back, relax, and um, let's have at it. Okay, the first order of business we have is to take care of a giveaway that I mentioned in my last um, video. And it was for a needlebook and a scissors fob um, kit. Everything you need is in this kit, even the penny to, to weight the, the scissors fob. It's called Hocus Pocus. And um, th this was, uh, I mean, technically it's a Halloween stitch. And uh, I, I need to clear the air just quickly about last time. Um, I may have come across a bit too strong about um, not being too keen on Halloween. And I, I enjoy Halloween, don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy dressing up as a kid. I love the candy, the trick-or-treating. It's fun um, to see all the, all the kids going out now having fun. And um, I, I think my, my concern or my focus um, was more about the Halloween stitching. And uh, in general, I don't have a lot of um, seasonal or holiday specific stitching just because, you know, if I work hard on something, I, I want to look at it all the time. And, um, I, you know, I don't think I'm going to have ghouls and goblins on my, on my wall year round. So, you know, that, that's kind of what I meant about not being that into Halloween. Um, so, so that being said, the recipient of um, Hocus Pocus, let me see, I, I did the random comment generator picker and just post uh, the recipient here, uh, Lorraine, Lorraine Bergstrom. Congratulations. Uh, I replied to your comment um, below. And uh, if you want to reach out, um, please provide me um, with your details and uh, I'll get this off to you as soon as, uh, as soon as I can. So thank you for participating. Uh, what else? Oh, I, okay, so we're gonna jump into the projects here. I, I said how everything is new. Um, the, one thing, the one thing that isn't new is a project that I was working on for a while and uh, I'll share it here. It's by Michelle Bendy of Bendy Stitchy Designs and it's a lady, 1844 Lady Man. Um, I ran a little bit of a sal but I, I don't think I'm good at sals very much so uh, it was more a, a stitch long for me and I, I was really happy that I finished it. I showed it off on my um, on my last floss tube and uh, I can't remember if I talked about what I wanted to do with it, what plans I had, but uh, what I ended up doing is making a project bag and uh, so this is I guess a FFO or a, a, a fully finished object as well as a sewing project so um, yeah, it was fun picking the fabric. Here, I'll, I'll just show it to you. This is the back. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Uh, this uh, fabric, this print I got, uh, is from uh, an online shop called Spoonflower. If you've never been there, if you haven't checked it out, please do. Uh, it's, a, it's a place where uh, designers or, or anyone really can load up their, um, their prints and people can order them on a variety of textiles, I think even on sheets or curtains, um, bed linens, and... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a really great site to see a lot of um, unconventional stuff you wouldn't normally find in a, in a regular fabric store. So I was so happy to find uh, this fabric that uh, I thought would be a, a really nice option. Um, 
to frame my lady man. How's that looking? Is that, oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with the way this turned out. The reason I wanted some wild and crazy, almost psychedelic butterflies, well, for obvious reasons, is, you know, because of um, these two whacking wild and crazy butterflies. So, yeah, it, wor it worked out really well. I, I picked a nice, um, just a solid purple to frame it. Otherwise, I, I thought it would have gotten a little bit lost. Uh, uh, the lady man here has uh, some beads on his um, buttons. Or, yeah, his buttons are beads. And uh, I, I, I hope that they'll stay on. I, I did each one individually with a knot behind each one. So... If one falls off, they're not all going to fall off. Um, and if they do, maybe I'll just end up doing French knots or something. <laughs> so uh, what's unusual for those sewers, um, I've showed off a few project bags that I've made here. And uh, I did a different zipper technique this time. I did, uh, can you see? Not really, eh? Yeah, I did. I did a little tabs. On, um, on the ends of the zippers. Rather than doing a continuous loop of, uh, of teeth, I did little uh, tabs on each end and uh, just to finish off the zipper and give it a nice clean edge. And the, the inside is lined with um, the same purple that uh, frames my, uh, my Lady Man cross stitch. So I'm, I'm so happy with the way that this turned out that uh, I think that I'll be, I have a few other finishes that uh, are just, sitting in a bin under the under the bed so I'll, I'll dig them out and see how I can uh, sew them up into maybe another project bag or something else um, so lady man project bag uh, what I what I have in here actually is uh, I, I kind of alluded to it in my last floss tube it was a, a model um, a sample that I was uh, stitching um, for a bendy stitchy design and um, I, I can show it to you because it's finished it's in the hands of everywhere it needs to be and uh, it will be listed if not already um, certainly by the time you're watching this you should find it and uh, yeah I, I've got my little um, printout here from the PDF this um, called Yule Ball you know what I'll do? I'll I'll share the picture that uh, that I took, and um, yeah, this uh, this is a design from Bendy Stitchy, Michelle Bendy, and uh, uh, this this model was specifically for um, Evertote, if you know Caroline over at Evertote, and um, Carrie with uh, I think formerly Leo and Roxy Floss Co. Now. Roxy Floss Co. So um, this model I stitched for them um, to showcase the conversion using the Roxy Floss Co. flosses and I stitched it on uh, catnap. Uh, it's a 46 count so this was the first time I've ever stitched on 46 count and it was um, it was I, I don't want to call it an adventure but it, it was definitely sort of jump both feet in first uh, for me. I've not stitched on anything that that fine before. Um, I mean, in terms of a larger project. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed stitching it and it took me about three weeks. So this, I have to say, is by far the fastest I've uh, ever stitched anything of this size or of this scale before. And I, I didn't have any trouble, but let me tell you, I I could feel it in my tendons after. Yeah, I, <laughs> I needed to take a serious break from that. And um, yeah, so that's, that's my first project that, uh, or my first uh, stitching project I wanted to share that I actually technically do not have with me. Uh, it's in Caroline's uh, capable hands. And I think that um, you'll be, if, if, it's not already on the Evertail website by the time you're um, watching this. It, it certainly will be imminently, so uh, I, I hope you catch it. Uh, Michelle has another holiday release um, that she'll be providing through Evertote. Uh, so she's got two that they'll be listed um, very shortly if they're not up already. So uh, go check them out. Evertote, um, drop down box below. Okay. Uh, so I guess 
our first project that I can that I can actually really show you is um, a start and almost finish. Well, it, it's a start and finish. Um, it's uh, not fully finished. It's by uh, Just Nan. It's a uh, gingerbread candy mouse. Uh, this is a limited edition um, that came out, I think, maybe two years ago. And it came with uh, the embellishment pack, um, all the beads that you need, a little wire tail. And um, yeah, it was a really cute little project. I stitched it on um, a 32 count. Here, I'll just hold it up. I stitched it on 32 count. Um, it's a unknown color because it came from a little sample kit from number 12 Stitch Co. Um, so this is kind of the mouse all splayed out, sort of skinned, <laughs> if you were. I used uh, all the called for colors. I used the beads that came with the kit. And um, yeah, the only, the only disappointment I have to say with this is, uh, is I, I tend to kit up a lot of my projects ahead of time. And I, I had a fabric, I had the called for fabric, but um, it's sitting somewhere in a kit that I couldn't find. And so I, I chose this color. I, th I think it's a decent substitute for, for what they offered. I mean, it's not fully gingerbread, but it, it's gingerbready enough. And, um, and another, another challenge I had with, with sewing this or, or with stitching this is, um, is uh, it was I didn't have a really great reference because it's a three-dimensional object. Um, it was hard to get an overall look of what the piece should look like. So when I'm stitching it color by color, um, it, I was a little bit in the dark. It was kind of like putting a puzzle together without knowing what the finished thing is supposed to look like. So uh, it was really fun to see it coming together towards the end. And it was like, oh yeah, those are candies and that's where the beads go. So well, those are the ears. <laughs> so yeah, I look forward to, it, it, this is actually much smaller than I expected. Like, I don't know if you can see uh, relative to, to the size of my finger here. Um, it, it, it's pretty petite. So uh, uh, hopefully next time I film, um, you'll be able to see the finished, the fully finished uh, mouse. So candy gingerbread, gingerbread candy mouse. I'll leave this out because we're gonna talk about this later. So what's next? Oh, I think uh, I've got another, I've got another ornament here. Um, speaking of the holidays and Christmas and, uh, and ornaments, I picked up uh, the latest edition of um, just, uh, just cross stitch Christmas ornaments. This is 2022. Um, really, really cool projects in here um, from some names that that I recognize. I, I can't really show you, but well, here I can show you like this kind of page. I'm sure you you're familiar with this publication, and uh, and by coincidence, uh, so this this is 2022. By coincidence, I happen to have I, I bought on the secondary market um, 2002. <laughs> so this magazine is actually from 20 years earlier, and I bought this because it had a few designs that that I thought I would really enjoy stitching, and. Uh, one of them, what's the one that I, what's the one that I, well, I'll just show it to you. Uh, the one that I stitched is by Prairie Schooler, and uh, it's really, it's really fun to know that a lot of these designers have a fantastic longevity and uh, their stuff really is timeless. So uh, this was my, um, I don't even need to share the, the chart with you because, uh, well, you know what? What I'll do, I'll, I'll, I think I've got the page that, oh, here it is. This is, um, there's the finished object right there. You can see it's number two. Um, it's called uh, Cabin Pin Keep by Prairie Schooler. And this is my finish. This is my start of my finish. Mm. 
why can I never get this right? Let's try holding it this way. There we go. That's not so bad, right? There we go. Uh, so the floss that I used, oh, I still have in here. It's um, two of the Liu and Roxy, uh, Falu Red and Chalkboard. So these are kind of their classic signature color. And um, I, I just used the called for green uh, DMC. So I need to, uh, and it's on 40 count as uh, Weigart linen. So I need to turn this into an ornament. So again, the next, uh, the next time you see this should be a fully finished object. So um, what, uh, I, I think I may do it similar to what was in the magazine. And uh, it, it, you know, it's just a, a quick and easy finish. So, uh, so that, that should be fun. Um, yeah, I, I like these small projects. It's <laughs> take little small project bags. They're, they're quick to stitch up, a little portable. And um, yeah, it's certainly cheaper than framing. Okay, the next, the next project, again, picking off cat hair. Uh, so I might have shown this to you last time. This is a project bag uh, from Shiba Designs and it's using a Teresa Kogut fabric. Uh, it's a vinyl, vinyl pouch. And uh, what I have in here is a project. Uh, it's a chart by uh, Works by ABC. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not that familiar with this uh, particular designer. And uh, the one that I picked, this is from a Nashville release and it's uh, called Spiral. And what I love about this is the, the geometry and also the, the organic flow to it. I mean, it's almost like a Fibonacci, but, but not quite. And uh, I, I also love the fact that you can um, influence the design by the colors that you choose to stitch. So she actually stitched it in two solid colors and then a sulky variation that had um, the multiple um, colors um, dyed into it. And, uh, and I, I really liked the effect of it. So I kind of tried to reproduce it with, with what I had. And, uh, and uh, this is what Oh, so I'll, I'll show you these are the these are the colors that I used by Threadworks, and uh, I think in the, in um, not in direct sunlight they looked uh, they looked a little more harmonious, um, but in the daylight you know I can I can definitely see this is reading more green than than these two, which is sort of an, an aqua and a teal. And this one is definitely kind of a green. So I was a little bit nervous about how they would go together. And, and they actually do. I'm, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with how it looked. And uh, this, is, this is where I am so far. I, I shared a, an image of this, there we go, on, um, on my Instagram account and uh, and a lot of people really liked it. So I, I think especially the fabric was uh, was really cool. It is, who's the fabric by? Uh, it's a 36 count French lilac by Lakeside Linens, um, Threadworks Cotton. And uh, this this actually was a project that I picked up um, to, to try practicing my stitching in hand with. And um, Marie, bless her, <laughs> of um, uh, Stitches and Diamonds, um, really um, worked hard at uh, encouraging me to, to stitch in hand and that it was possible. And I, I started, I was, I, I need to practice. I, I really need to practice. And I actually kept one of these segments. The, the first one I did was a stitch in hand. I, I don't think you're gonna be able to see which one here? Let's see. This this one here. This is stitch in hand, and the rest I stitched on the frame, and um, and it wasn't that different enough um, that that I wanted to pull it out. I'm I'm just gonna keep it. It's fine, but um, but oh. 
a really big learning for me was actually the technique of the direction that the needles the needle goes in uh, when you're stitching using stitch in hand so I tried carrying that through um, when I was stitching it on the frame and uh, here I am showing the back <laughs> I think that's the first first time you're going to see a back here, and uh, you can see that it it generally worked out for me. It's it's not that terrible. <laughs> I mean, this looks this looks like um, some of the good stitching that I've seen. So I'm I'm pretty pleased with myself, and and not that I'm a big back person. Like I don't. Um, I don't care what it looks like behind the scenes, but uh, you know, at least personally, it, it's not a big issue for me. But what what I do find is having that consistent direction um, that that you're traveling your thread in um, creates a very even and consistent look of your actual stitches, and that's mostly because of the tension of your thread as it's going through the linen, um, it, it's pulling in the same direction for all of your stitches. So uh, you don't have some that might have a longer leg or some that are a little twisted because it's pulled down. So I I really enjoy. Um, learning how to stitch this um, using this process and you know maybe my next my next one I'll I'll continue um, to practice stitching in hand um, but for this one it, it's such a quick and easy stitch I'm, I'm gonna keep it on the frame and I should hopefully have that finished uh, in no time so thank you for not giving up on me Marie I, I appreciate that <laughs> Okay, what else? What else do we have? Um, if you've watched me before, uh, you kind of know my taste is sort of all over the place and what kind of charts appeal to me are, are all over the place. And uh, I, I've not done... I've not done a lot of uh, reproduction samplers and... Uh, I mean, we all have hands across the sea. Most of us do anyway. And I've got three, three of her charts, um, three of Nicola's charts. And I started one. It's going okay. Um, but I, when I saw this, I mean, I needed to get it immediately or as soon as I could. And uh, this, I, I actually saw her in an Instagram post um, stitching it when she shared a photo of her um, at, a, at a retreat or a, um, a stitch in um, somewhere. And uh, I, I did a screen cap of it and uh, I'll, I'll share it here. So I didn't even know what it was called. I was attracted to it because of the border and the trees and, uh, and it was so charming. And um, so, Fanny Bramley. <laughs> it's uh, I, I got the chart. There she is. And her expression, I mean, this is not Fanny Bramley, but the expression of this girl just slayed me. I mean, it's sort of impetuous and uh, yeah, really, really kind of funny. But here you can see what I'm talking about with that uh, gorgeous geometric border and uh, the beautiful topiary and uh, that great little house and uh, the beautiful um, scripted font. So, and I like that it's got fairly limited um, color range. So I was so happy when this came out, I, I bought it immediately. And my friend Ellen, when she was uh, traveling through the, uh, through the States on her on her um, road tour, um, she managed to snag the fabric for me, the called for um, the called for linen. And it's the first time that I'm using uh, a tabby cat linen. And I, I have to say I was a little bit intimidated by um, the huge difference between the light and the dark and and what's that going to look like. But actually, I mean, her her models that she shows, and she uses um, the creme brulee a lot. Um, the models that she shows are, are truly brilliant. So how far did I get? You want to know, right? Uh, this is 40, 40 count. Yeah, this is 40 count. I'm using the called for um, Auvergne Soie, the Soie d'Alger. And uh, this is as far as I got. So 
how are we looking? Yeah, the colors, I mean, it's it's a little bit warmer in real life. It, it's not quite as, um, it's, it's, it's not quite as cool in, um, in real life. It's a little bit warmer. And uh, that green band that you see takes us right across the entire width of the sampler. So uh, this is really nice to stitch. It was, uh, it's enough variation, but, um, but the repeat is really manageable. And the same thing with the border, um, with, this, with this red border. It was a really easy stitch. You didn't need to rely on the chart. There we go. How's that? <laughs> So I'm, I'm almost at the top here, and uh, we're, we're going to get to the corner right here. And the reason I stopped is because, you know, it's me, and uh, I do my best to make things as difficult as possible uh, for myself. So <laughs> the, the debate is how I handle the corners, and, and the reason why that's important is um, Fanny kind of played it loose and easy with her corners. I, I can't really show you on um, this model here because it's it's quite small. Well, maybe you can see it. Um, each of her four corners is different, so she totally went off script. And uh, and Nicola had it charted two ways. She charted it originally as stitched, and then she has a version of the chart where if you want to get the corners perfect the way that they were intended, you know, follow this version. So, you know, me, the endless debate, what am I going to do? And uh, I, uh, so I, I'm, I've committed myself to stitching it the way Fanny stitched it. And even if I make a mistake, that's okay. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Um, I really like the quirkiness that it adds. And um, if it doesn't quite work out the way hers had um, had been charted, then that's okay. I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep. Um, yeah, it just makes it more, more me. So Fanny Bramley, Hands Across the Sea. Just plowing through this here, eh? Uh, what is next? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have such a mess here. What the, oh, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> this is uh, going to be another ornament, and this is courtesy of Ink Circles, who I, I have talked about here before. And uh, I'll show you, this actually is for, oh, you know what I'll do? I've, I've got it in here. Oops. <laughs> um, Tracy likes uh, sending cards to her patrons. So I received a sweet little card. And inside is an invitation. You are invited to the Jingle Ball. Uh, stitch shop and be merry. It's uh, December 2nd and 3rd, uh, which is coming up really fast um, It might be passed already based on when you're watching this But um, there's going to be 12 designers that will be sort of hosting a space um, There'll be little meet-and-greets and there's also going to be some seminars or, or classes in in different subject areas and Tracy is offering one on how to finish an ornament in a particular style or a particular way and um, she provided the the pattern the stitching if you're taking the course and uh, she's called it <laughs> Swedish neat Swedish neat bells and uh, it's the same frame um, the little motif in that center medallion is different. There's six different versions. Um, I picked, uh, I, this is the one I picked. I may as well just show you. So I'm hoping to have this finished in time for the, for the class, um, on December 3rd. And, uh, it's a little bigger than I expected. And I think maybe because I've been used to working on things so small lately, um, it, it's a little bigger than I, than I had expected. Um, 
and also the floss that I used the the center floss is silk it's a it's a hand dyed and um, I was really really struggling with it and um, yeah, I kind of fought it the whole way but I'm glad I persevered and um, the the dark um, blacky gray around the outside is um, is also an over dyed floss and this, this the dark one is from um, hand dyed by Rolanda and the linen is a 36 count uh, this is by Brennan Needle and it is called uh, Tea and Two Tons and what I liked is uh, this this linen has um, little flecks of I don't know if you can see little flecks of um, sort of this hot pink and I thought that it would go nice with um, the, the floss that I used here and uh, like I said I'm hoping to have this finished so I can do um, the class live with her like do the same finish I got my ribbon um, this is uh, this is the ribbon that I picked I think you could get the whole kit from her um, or you can also just get the PDF version and uh, that's what I elected to do so I had to buy the supplies as well and um, and then the, the jingle bells so yeah that's uh again this was a this was a quick stitch uh it's two threads um two threads over two strands of um linen and uh i really tried on this project to keep my linen uh, my sorry my threads my floss parallel to each other and uh, so I was doing the whole railroad technique and it took a lot longer than than I would have liked to be honest with you I, I mean this should be done by now it would have been done if it was just one strand but with two it's it's taking a little bit longer taking a little bit longer but what's today yeah I, I should have it done by the time of the seminar okay what else do we have Oh, oh, we have some happy mail. Let's take a look at this happy mail. So uh, I said this is an all new episode. Um, you've heard me talk about some of these designers before. Jeanette Douglas is, uh, is a huge favorite of mine. I, I really, I love, love, love her stuff. And uh, I've been doing her whole mini um, mini bouquet series throughout uh, 2022, and it's it's really been a fun a fun series of projects for me. In that I was um, taking each of the finished designs and turning them into into a novel or unusual kind of um, full fully finished object, and uh, so through that process I've really um, been enjoying chatting with the designer with Jeanette and she was oh my God bless her <laughs> she was so kind to send me uh, two charts and uh, for my stitching pleasure and uh, I, I wanted to share them with you and uh, Ryan happy stitching <laughs> Ryan happy stitching there we go uh, one of them is a Holland sampler I, I won't even bother saying this in Dutch because I'll just butcher it um, the Holland Zimmer Club <laughs> and uh, this is, it's not a reproduction, it is uh, one of her original designs um, based obviously on, um, I think the focus was based on um, darning, certain um, decorative darning techniques uh, she talked about here. You know what, this is, this is too beautiful to not share out of the plastic. some specialty stitches I love uh, the alphabet variations we've got a peacock a lot of classic traditional designs we've got the crown um, yeah of oh, the tree of life beautiful I'm, I'm really looking forward to this and uh, she even included the um, it, it's got some flosses from Gloriana uh, Soie d'Auger and um, classic color works needlepoint ink and uh, she included uh, two of the Gloriana these are the more heavily variegated uh, flosses 
that are that are called for in the design. And Gloriana's, I find it's pretty hard to to track down these days. And so I'm I'm really happy that that receiving these will will not hold me up from um, from having a go at stitching this. So that is my Holland. And the other one, oh, oh, I put both down. The other one is the acorn tray set. Take this out too. Acorn tray set. This I think was, uh, might have been an exclusive at one time for um, particular, um, um, retailer or a seminar, a class that uh, was being offered. So it's got a, a drum, it's got a little dish, and it's got the scissors fob. And uh, again, she, she was so kind to include um, some of the specialty uh, flosses, or is it all of the specialty flosses that were called for? That's the, yeah, the embellishment package. So That was really kind of her too. So thank you so much, Jeanette. Um, I, I really appreciate it. And I will definitely be putting those to good use. Oh, sorry about that. I have um, kind of this band of light coming across me. So I hope that wasn't too distracting. I just noticed it and uh, I pulled the blinds. So hopefully you can still see me. Uh, so I, I talked about Happy Mail, and this is sort of Happy Mail too. This is Happy Mail to me, from me. And, uh, you know, December's right around the corner, and I, I do have, um, I, I enjoy Advent or those uh, countdown calendars a lot, like really a lot. And uh, one of the things I treated myself to was um, from, Chapel View. Woo! Sorry about that. There we go. Spill the beans. <laughs> Chapel View Crafts and uh, lovely woman, beautiful company in the UK, and she does these polymer um, needle minders, stitch markers, um, notions, um, little wall art uh, sort of vignettes. And so one of her advents that she offered was a, a set of 12, each individually wrapped. And uh, to be honest, I ordered it so long ago, I can't even remember. I, I think there were a couple of themes and I, I can't even remember. So because, because there's 12 in this set, I mean, I'm not gonna see it now, but, but because there's 12 in this set, I'll probably, um, start it after Christmas rather than using it as a countdown to Christmas. So, I mean, I, I'm not religious at all, but I, I think that the 12 days of Christmas sort of started on Christmas and um, followed um, so that this will be my uh, little Advent uh, treat to myself that I'll do after Christmas. And then before Christmas, one of, one of the other Advents I treated myself to is from a company called Saju, and uh, they're they're based in France, and they do a lot of sewing notions, embroidery um, supplies, haberdashery, um, gorgeous ribbons, scissors, fabrics, uh, embroidery floss, and uh, so this is how they shipped it to me. And I think one of the projects that they wanted you to do is make uh, little fabric bags to put these um, little countdown treats in. And I'm not gonna have time to do that. So I'll just, I'll, I'll just enjoy it as, it as the days unfold. And uh, everything is uh, in these cute little bags. Pouches, they're numbered. Um, one for every day from 1 to 24, I think. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm really curious to know what's inside. But um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll have a review or recap of, uh, of what was included in here. So I'm sure some of you might be curious uh, to know. So we'll be sharing the contents of this a um, little bit later. Oh yeah, uh, speaking of a holiday countdown, I did pick up the um, 
the Evertote and Roxy Floss Co. and Modern Folk Embroidery um, Countdown chart. This is just the chart that I bought. Um, I know um, they offered this whole package with, again, like the Saju, where every day you unwrap, I think, a floss and then a part of the chart. And then um, there's going to be a lot of web content on, on um, FlossTube and on Instagram um, as, as the month unfolds. And uh, I, of course, had to be a part of it in some way. So I, I did pick up the chart and I won't have that element of surprise as, as the month unfolds, but um, I will get to enjoy stitching it along with everyone else. So I, I'm not going to go into much detail here. Um, Modern Folk Embroidery, Evertote, um, all the links are down below. Uh, they've all talked about it on their channels and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I think a lot of people are, are very excited about that. And... Next is, uh, okay, I guess we're doing all acquisitions now. Um, this is from a company called um, Pigeon Co-op. And uh, it's a gentleman, his name is Max, I think, from Ottawa. And uh, I he just popped up in my feed. I, I don't think uh, someone referred him, or maybe I saw a chart of his um, that someone had stitched. And uh, he was launching a few new winter designs. And so one of them I, I just had to get. And uh, it's called Winter Stag. Pigeon Co-op. It's a counted cross-stitch kit. And, you know, I, I don't I don't necessarily need a kit. It, it uses... Um, I think just regular DMC. It uses a 14 count ADA and it comes with a hoop. And, uh, you know, normally I'm cool without that. I have enough um, of those materials um, to, to do it on my own. I would just get the chart. But what I was curious about is um, uh, he has a very much an uh, eco focus um, on his brand and I was really uh, yeah proudly designed and made in Canada using earth-friendly materials and uh, I was curious to know um, what that meant for him and part part of um, my my job I I was doing some research on branding and packaging and what what it means to be eco friendly or sustainable or all of those buzz buzzwords that that totally are not regulated um, like really you can label sustainable and um, don't have to back it up like it's it's really kind of crazy so I was curious to know what what that meant for Max and uh, I really I really appreciate everything um, that he's done and that all of the packaging you know, uses um, well the shipping um, material is using post-consumer waste the um, the the folder that it comes in is um, recyclable and made with 100% recycled paper. Uh, the sticker uh, is um, also using um, uh, organic um, ink and uh, he sources everything he can local locally. It's all printed locally and uh, I, I really valued that. So beautiful instruction books and um, one, one thing I did want to share with you, like I, I really like DMC. I love the richness of their colors. Um, I like how they're stable. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of bleeding in general. And um, his came with uh, three colors. Um, and I have to say, I don't think you can see very well here, but they're so yeah, you're not going to be able to see it all. They're in real life. They are so beautifully shiny. I, I could swear that these were silk. Like I, I'm looking at these compared to my DMC. And I don't know if it's because it's dusty here or covered in cat hair. But these are so, so um, lustrous. Um, I, I know DMC does have a sheen, but these these are particularly um, sheeny. <laughs> so I'm I'm really looking forward to see how this uh, stitches up. And the the floss, I mean, I mean the the chart. I wish I could show you here, um, but it's it's huge. It's legible. It's in color. It's in symbols. Uh, really, 
no one, by the way, is is promoting me um, or sponsoring me to say any of this. So this this is all genuine. Um, in fact, we we've never. I, I didn't even tell him that I'm going to be talking about about his uh, company um, or his mission on on my Floss Tube channel. So uh, please please check him out if um, you are interested in that style or interested in that um, that type of philosophy. So. So thank you, Max. And what I have here, I can't remember. Oh yeah, I bought I bought this a while ago. This was a PDF that I picked up. It's um, historic stitches, and I think we can we can see it. Okay, it's a uh, John Foster. You know, I I like um, I like uh, samplers done by boys. I mean, they're not that common so uh, here's one john foster 1885 and uh yeah i i i really really i really think it's sweet and in a way it reminds me of the fanny bramley sampler that i picked up and uh i mean it's got those it's got those two trees it's got a nice geometric border it's got the house in the middle but if you can see i'll see if i can zoom in here if you can see the bricks on the house, I mean, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. I don't know if he if he just didn't care or, uh, you know, if he got in trouble for it, but he just went for it. And and I, I really appreciate that quality. Um, it's uh, like good for them. You know, I, I caused myself so much grief about, you know, making a mistake and, you know, picking things out and, and getting it perfect. And you know what, you, you don't have to just just go with it, embrace it. And uh, I think it gives it a lot of character and a quality that uh, you're not going to find in something that, um, you know, it could have been stitched by a machine or something. So yeah, I think these kinds of, um, and you can't even call it a flaw or a mistake, but uh, this kind of individual take on on a stitch really makes them unique and special. And it also gives me confidence in <laughs> in in my own abilities. And uh, when I make a mistake, it's it's not the end of the world. Um, speaking of not a mistake, this is not a mistake. <laughs> um, Maximum Cross Stitch, we do love Ellen, um, has launched her very first um, full uh, sampler chart. Our designs go to 11. This one is called There's Always a Room. And oh my goodness, look at the border. Look at that house. Look at the bird. Look at the roses. <laughs> I know people are already stitching this, and and uh, you can see their progress on on Instagram. Um, people have talked about this, and it's it's available through Evertote. Uh, it's stitched in the Roxy floss coat colors, and uh, she gives. Th there are some specialty stitches in here, and uh, let's do. I have a list of them. Uh, da, 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 Algerian eyelets, Smyrna crosses, satin, um, so and, and some over one. But what's nice is she also gives you uh, some alternatives if if you're doing it, say on Ada, for instance, or you don't want to do those specialty stitches. So um, you know, it, it's really a chart for everyone, and uh, I think it, it's really beautiful. So congratulations, Ellen. Um, again, it's it's available through Evertote. And uh, I will be giving one away, not, not this one, because it was uh, inscribed specifically to me. So I'll be, uh, I can't even remember, oh yes. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be giving one of these away to uh, anyone out there who might be interested in, uh, in enjoying it. And even if you own it already, which you, you may very well do, um, you, you can pass it on to a friend or just let me know and I'll and I'll randomly uh, select another uh, commenter so uh, you're not gonna need a, a trigger word or a word that I'm uh, going to look for just if you if you're interested just leave me a comment below um, and uh, I'll be picking from those uh, please be a subscriber um, please be over 18 so I can uh, get your address from you and um, 
please do not mention the word giveaway or, or anything like that. Uh, so this is, uh, this is giveaway number one that we're doing today. I'm so proud of you, Ellen, really. I mean, and, and I've seen her, her, her other stitches that she's doing and uh, her, her designs are just spectacular. I think Evertote has uh, her, her freebies uh, listed as well. So just check the link down below. Okay, that, that's it for stitching. Um, so let's talk about knitting. I've got one knitting project I wanna share with you. And uh, this is a, a pattern. It's a design that I got from a book called uh, Knit Happy with self-striping yarn. And actually what I'm stitching is um, the model that you see here right on the cover. And uh, it's, a, it's a book with nothing but designs using self-striping yarn. They're just beautiful, right? Uh, it's using self-striping yarn, and I um, I have a lot of self-striping yarn, um, particularly from from timber yarns. Uh, they have beautiful, beautiful um, hand-dyed self-striping yarn, and the the pattern that I wanted to stitch. Where did it go? Did I lose it already? Oh yes, a rainbow adventure fingerless mitts. So you can see, yeah, they're right here on the cover, and. Uh, I'm like, oh, this is an awesome way to use my self-striping yarn. And the irony is all of the yarn that I have is socks and this uses a worsted weight. So so I, I had to hold the, the yarn double and, um, and it's actually working out really, really well. This is, this is where I am so far. It's my first time, sorry for all the needles and everything. Uh, it's my first time knitting anything for the hands and uh, I'm past the wrist and I'm about ready to, I don't know if you can see this, there you go. There's my thumb forming. I'm about ready to, to close it off here and then I'll continue with the hand part and uh, and go forward and then I'll, I'll finish off with the thumb. So, and then hopefully I'll be able to repeat it all in a mirror image um, for my left hand. So uh, the color, uh, it's called Hocus Pocus. So I guess uh, it, it was in, intended, I guess, to be a Halloween print. And I love neon. I love these bold electric colors. And now that I'm knitting it up, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking kind of Halloween-y. But, uh, but yeah, I love it. I love it. So hopefully, you know, I'll have these done before the, before the end of the year. So that's, that's my knitting. So I think that's it for my projects. And, uh, what, what I wanted to talk to you about was one more, one more sweepstakes. And this I actually wasn't anticipating, um, announcing on this video um, because I, I hadn't known but uh, in between filming this I, I was looking at my um, YouTube channel and uh, I saw that we've hit well I've hit 2,000 subscribers and uh, to be honest with you I I really don't know how that happened. Um, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and for subscribing. And uh, I'm I'm so grateful for, for this experience and for um, what you give to me and for, for what I can bring to you. So genuinely, thank you from, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, as a way to say thank you, I am going to... Uh, well, this is connecting to something else. Uh, just out of sight, maybe about six feet away, um, I have a new toy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was a big, kind of expensive new toy. It's a sewing machine that I've needed a new sewing machine for quite some time. I was using a loaner from work that um, only had one speed and that was fast. Uh, it was really kind of crappy. So uh, with uh, Caroline's guidance, I um, she pointed me in the right direction and uh, I got a, a beautiful new machine. Uh, it's um, I'm so I'm so intimidated. I haven't even tried it yet. So, but <laughs> further to that, to tie the two together, uh, I do like to sew. I love sewing projects, and as a way to say thank you for uh, for watching, I will be making uh, or sewing 
designing and sewing two uh, needle books um, or little notions uh, ex accessories um, books similar to this and uh, it's um, you know just got some felt inside it's got a little pocket where you can keep uh, your scissors or um, uh, needle um, threader um, you can use it as a, as a thread bed inside. So I will be making two of these and we'll be giving them away, one for each of the, uh, the thousand subscribers that, that I have right now. So yay. Uh, so for, for one of them, I will be picking from um, the comments uh, that you'll leave here. And, um, and uh, again, please be a subscriber. Uh, there's no particular trigger word that I'm going to be looking for. Um, I, I, I just love the comments. So, um, and I try to reply to all of them. So, um, so please feel free to leave a comment. Um, so you'll have a chance to win a hand sewn by me um, little um, notions book. So, uh, or needle book. And, um, and I'll, I'll draw for, for one of them from that. And, and for the other one, uh, I am going to select uh, at random um, from my Instagram users. So uh, if, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, um, you will just automatically be entered. If, uh, if you don't, um, please do. Uh, my, my information, it's just Rai Rai Magai, same name. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the drop down box below. So I'll, uh, I'll have one um, needle book for YouTube and then another needle book for my Instagram account. And uh, the next time that I record, um, I'll share with you uh, the lucky recipients. So that's, that's all we have for today. And uh, judging by the mess, yeah, we, we did a pretty good job. So cheers to that. Um, thank you for joining me again, as always. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the near future, hopefully not uh, eight weeks like last time. Um, yeah, definitely before the end of the year. So sometime in the next month, we'll have a chat. And uh, until then, take care. Be well and uh, see you next time.